Welcome to the Atmosphere Church channel. On behalf of all of us here at Atmosphere, thank you for watching. We pray that this message will touch your heart and change your life. Regardless of what you believe, where you come from, or what questions you might have, you are welcome here. Our desire is to help lead you in experiencing God by following Jesus. If you want to find out more information about us, head over to our website at atmosphere.church. And don't forget to click below to subscribe. Enjoy the message. What's up, everybody? Pastor Jim Cruz here, lead pastor of Atmosphere Church, and welcome to Atmosphere Live. We are so grateful to have you part of our church fam, and I, I want to tell you that it is blowing my mind on how many people are a part of our online church family. And so from wherever you're watching, we are so grateful, and it would be super helpful if you would let us know today, if you're on Facebook Live watching or if you're on YouTube Live, just type out where you're watching from. It's always fun uh, to see who is a part of us and it allows us to be able to connect with you besides you just virtually being a part of our gathering. And I wanna give a special shout out to Veronica and her family. They actually visited us in person last week here in Thousand Oaks and they live in the state of Washington. And she says, we are faithful atmosphere live viewers. And I thought that was so incredible. I mean, it blows my mind to think about what God has done with our church in such a short amount of time. It's just all God. And the God stories continue to come, not just weekly, but I would say daily. And uh, you're a part of that God story. So we are so grateful for you. Hey, we are in a series, as you saw in that bumper video, called Heart for the House. Go ahead and type that out right now, Heart for the House. And what we've been learning is that God wants us to have a heart for his house. And we've been unpacking that over the last several weeks. The first week we looked at what makes a great house. We dove into HGTV, baby. And, and then we, we looked last week that you are gifted, that spiritual gifts play a role in deciding how God wants to use us to build his house. And today's talk, I've simply entitled Body Parts, because as we've learned last week about what that spiritual gifting is for the benefit of the church, today's kind of more the application. Like, what does that look like to take what God has gifted you with and apply it to the church? Because it's one thing to understand something, it's a whole new conversation to actually apply what you understand. And I hope that today's text, we're going to be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 12, allows you to see clearly that God wants you to understand how he's equipped you so that you can apply it and actually build the house that he's envisioned. And, and I'm pumped because as we enter into our third season as a ministry, as a church, I know that God is getting us ready for something special. And in order to be prepared for that something special, we have to make sure the house is in order and the house is ready. And, and just like if, if you know that you're, you're hosting an event at your house, right? You're gonna wanna make sure, is the house ready for this event? And I feel like God is bringing us something. And I don't know what it is, but, but myself and a bunch of other leaders, even my father-in-law called me this week and said, Jim, I'm telling you, God gave me a revelation. Something is coming extra special for your church. And I'm like, wow. So just like we're, we're ready for a company to come over or to host this event, we wanna make sure the house is prepared. And so this is like the application of it. So we're gonna be in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, excited. We're simply calling today's talk body parts. And you'll know why after I pray and read this text. So let's pray together. Father, I thank you, God, for everybody that is tuned in today. 
Lord, I believe you have an extra special word preparing us for an extra special season, not just for our church, but I believe for our personal lives. God, there's somebody watching right now that five minutes ago, they were not planning on watching this. They were not planning on even viewing this. And somehow, supernaturally, this video popped up. And I believe, God, you have an extra special word for that person. Maybe it's a couple of people. But Lord, speak to us, God, as we open your word together. Anoint me as your vessel. And we thank you in advance for how you're going to do that. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, so... 1 Corinthians chapter 12, it kind of unpacks this idea of spiritual gifts, but the text is so much more than talking about spiritual gifts. It's talking about how God wants to use each of us in the gifting that he's given us for something really cool for the house. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, we actually read this verse, but we're going to read all the way down to the end of chapter 12. So we're going to read a lot. So maybe this is a great time to grab your Bible and follow along with us. I'm going to read from the NIV. It says, Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers, to another, prophecy, to another, distinguishing between spirits, to another, speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. So when it's saying to each is given, like we all have faith, obviously, but but this is like saying that to some people, it's like God pours an extra scoop into that person's life. That's their spiritual gifting. It's like, we all have wisdom, right? We all have faith. We all have access to these things. But for some people in these specific areas, it seems like God just poured a little extra scoop into their life in that particular area. It goes on to say, all these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he distributes, God distributes them to each one just as he determines just as a body through one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Now, if the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an ear or an eye, I should say, uh, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, and the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable parts need no special treatment, but God has put the body together, giving greater honor to the parts that lacked it, so that there should be no division in the body. Hello, somebody. So that there should be no division division in the body i'll come back to that but that's its parts should have equal concern for each other if one part suffers every part suffers it with it if one part is honored every part rejoices with it now you speaking to the corinthian church you are the body of christ and each one of you is a part of it and god is placed in the church first of all apostles second prophets third teachers then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? 
Do you all work miracles? Do you all have gifts of healing? Do you all speak in tongues? Do you all interpret? And it's, it's kind of a, um, you know, a, one of those leading questions like, I, you know, no. Now, eagerly, it says, desire the greater gifts, and yet I will show you the most excellent way. So what's happening, just context here, is people are getting into this headspace that they feel more spiritual than other people because they have certain giftings. And Paul is saying, get away from this. Like, get away from this comparison culture. Like, so what? You don't have the gift of healing like this other person over here. That doesn't mean they're extra special and you're not as special. Where, where they may have the gift of healing, you have the, the gift of mercy. Where, where they may have the gift of tongues, you have the gift of prophecy. And so each one of these gifts has a very special place within the entire body. If we all had the gift of wisdom and nobody had the gift of faith, then we wouldn't be a whole body. And so God is working through each of us personally, individually, specific with a specific set of abilities, right? Uh, of uh, spiritual giftings so that when we work together, we will be the whole entire church, uh, that we will be the complete body. So enter in Mr. Potato Head, okay? So I know this is kind of funny. And man, Mr. Potato Head's been working out lately. Check out those guns, man. It's crazy. So just to kind of give you a working illustration here. Okay, Mr. Potato Head is pretty popular because he's got all these different exchangeable parts, right? So he's got his ears. He's, he's got, of course, the you know, the iconic mustache, his, his legs, and, and of course his accessories, um, and his, you know, massive guns on his arms. But the, the thing is, if, if we just were to strip him of all these body parts and take everything off, right, and, you know, just basically take all of the stuff off, you know, <laughs> uh, you, you see, it's like he's incomplete. It's, it's just this little shell that is nothing. So in order to be who Mr. Potato is supposed to be, it's going to require all the, the pieces, right, to, to get him to be that kind of potato head. Now, obviously, God's called us much more than to be potato heads for his kingdom. He's called us the body of Christ, that we're representing not a potato, we're representing Christ. And so we have to not only know our gifting, we have to know our role. We, we have to look at this and say, I, I am a part of something bigger than myself. And so my takeaway from this passage is we read it in its entirety, is that Christianity is a team sport that this isn't some individualistic faith that's between you and God as some people have espoused and some people have tried to convince themselves of why they don't need church. Like, I, I don't need church. I don't need uh, to go to a place. Like, I have my faith uh, on my own. But how crazy would it be if, you know, all you had were eyes? It's like, it, it looks super weird. Like, you were meant to be a part of something bigger than yourself. Like, God has wired you that way. So you're not this me, you're actually a we. And I believe this whole series about Heart for the House is learning to move from me to becoming we. It's not just about you. And I know in our consumerism mindset that we take with us to Costco or to Target or to the mall, we bring into church and we come into church and we sit down like we're at Nordstrom and we sit there and we say, what can they do for me? How quick can they serve me? What, what do they offer me? We come in and it's like me, 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 me. But really, if, if you were to be completely biblical about our gathering together, it's not about what the church can offer me, but it's what I can offer the church. That, that there is a role. Yes, the church is going to inspire your faith. The church is where you're going to grow in your faith. But you have to ask yourself a really defining question. Why did God lead me to Atmosphere Church? Why did he lead me to belong to this group of people? 
And it's not so this guy can just speak this inspiring message and you can applaud and feel better about your life and go. No, I believe you are a part of this church because not only is God building you up, God wants to use you to help build others up that are part of our community. I really do believe that. And that when you're not in that position, we're not able to be the full body of Christ that we're called to be. It's like we're missing ears when you're not involved. It's like we're missing eyes when you're not involved. It's like we're missing legs when you're not involved. That, that God has put you in this body, not so that you can be a, in the stands cheering us on, is it so that you can be on the field playing the game. Come on, somebody. This is what you're called to do. Now, there was a lady years ago, and I, and I made this note, and it was like when I was uh, helping pastor at the Bakersfield campus, and, and she had not been there in a while. And I saw her, and I'm like, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. And she said, you know what, pastor? I've been gone for months. And nobody called me. Nobody checked on me. It was just like, I was invisible and I didn't, I didn't matter. And she kind of had kind of this attitude of like, like where was the church to reach out to me? And I kind of turned her attitude around because the indictment that she was giving against the church of not noticing when she was gone was actually an indictment on her. She didn't see it that way. I had to point it out that if, if you can, miss for months and nobody notices who's that really on because if you're really a part of the body the way that God has designed you to be a part of the body then you're going to be missed because there's going to be a body part that's not working anymore somebody's like hey where is this at oh it's because mary mary's not here like where's mary has anybody checked on her oh no she's not here hey get somebody get on the phone check on mary what what's happening with her you see what i'm talking about it's like god god has connected us i'm like the king of illustrations today like these giant lego pieces right like you god has designed you so that you, you're designed to be connected to something else. And so when you're not connected, it, it's terrible. There's nothing sadder to me than finding a Lego piece by itself under the couch. Because it's like you see this Lego piece and you're just like, ah, it, you know it belongs to something bigger than it. And it's just laying there lonely by itself and it's been designed to connect to something bigger than it is. That, my friend, is you. And so when you're not connecting, then the, the house is not complete. And so plug yourself in and get yourself a part of the body so that if something happened and you didn't make it, the church would notice. Come on. Like that, that was clarifying for me with that lady. But he activated you to put you in the game to be a part of the house. And this is what I want to tell you this morning. Write these down. Number one, everyone has a gift. We talked about that last week. Here's number two. Write this down. Everyone has a role. And number three, everyone is called to serve. So everyone has a gift. Everyone has a role. And everyone has been called to serve. Let me give you a scripture that we covered last week. And I want to circle back because this is so important for you to, to learn and apply. First Peter 4.10, God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts, use them well to serve one another. So you've been called to serve one another. I like to say it this way, saved people serve people. Type that out, saved people serve people. And when you are serving, I guarantee you the church is thriving. When you're not serving, something's missing. The church cannot be the full body that it was created to be. It cannot be the house it was created to be. It requires you stepping up, owning your role, and serving in some capacity. And serving is so good. It's so beneficial. I, I want to give you three things that serving accomplishes. Like when you actually step into this idea of serving. Number one, serving is how you push back division. 
I talked about this a few weeks ago, that our default position is division. So you have to work to create unity. If you do nothing, you will always follow the current of division. I mean, just look at our culture. Do you need a pastor to tell you this? Like it's all around us. Hello? It's like division is here. But how we push back on the division and bring in more unity is that we serve one another. We, we get into this place where we, we get away from our differences for a, a higher common good, which is the kingdom of God. So thinking about, you know, a house, thinking about, you know, these, you know, being connected to something bigger than yourself, then, then it doesn't matter in that place, mass, no mass, vaccine, no vaccine, whatever the case is, it's like Republican, Democrat, it doesn't matter because we are here for the common good of God's kingdom. That becomes our primary focus and everything else becomes secondary. And, and when you're serving the kingdom of God in some capacity, that becomes the primary focus and that's what unifies us. Think about the, the word that is used most often in that text that I just read. It's not the word spiritual gift. It's the word one, same. It's, it's this idea that Paul is saying we, when we are working and serving within the gifting that God has given us, we're actually creating unity within the body. And it's when people go rogue and they're not serving that there's more and more division because the things that should be secondary in our life become the primary. So if the kingdom of God is not first, something else is first. Hello, I'm talking to somebody. When, when the kingdom of God is not first in your life, something else will be inserted. And a lot of people right now, they're, they're just following the narratives of what everybody else is making their primary concern. The people that don't know God, that don't follow Jesus, yeah, they're going to have their talking points. But you, my friend, as a follower of Jesus filled with the Spirit of God, your primary common denominator about how you are living your life is the kingdom. You're a kingdom-minded person. Seek first the kingdom of God and everything else shall be added to you. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 33. So the question is, is God's kingdom your primary concern? And when you serve, that's what happens. It becomes the primary and everything else becomes secondary. And the byproduct of that is unity in the body. So if you want to come against division, the biggest way in my mind that you're going to be able to come against division is by serving. Find a need and you fill it and you do it with other people. Number two, write this down. Serving is where you make the house your home. Serving is where you make the house your home. So I see this all the time through the years that I've been serving. Even my own personal story is when you start serving, you start getting to know people. You, you develop a circle. And so it's easy in, in our individual mentality to come into church and sit in a row and you don't get to know anybody and you hear the worship, God moves your heart. You hear the message, God moves your heart, and then you just leave. But serving doesn't give you that option to just leave. Like serving requires that you actually interact with other people. Serving requires that you get to know people. You learn their story as you're doing something, whether it's serving with kids ministry or maybe even doing a Zoom life group like we wanna do with our, our Atmosphere Live people. But it, it's forcing you to get to know other people that are serving along with you. So you're connecting with them. And that's how you move from a fan to become fam. You move from a fan to become fam, N to M, simply by serving. You have that, that common you know, denominator, like, hey, we're, we're in this, like we're, we're, we're doing this common good thing together, and, and what's your story, and, and how did you hear about atmosphere, and, and uh, what's God doing in your life? And pretty soon, you have these battle buddies in your life. I love life groups because life groups is where we also become family. But I think in a way, when you serve, it's a lot more organic than sitting in a life group. Because some of you, honestly, <laughs> the thought of going into a living room and actually you know, sharing your feelings, like Dr. Phil status, you're like, uh, no, thank you. Especially some of you bros that are watching right now, you're like, I'll never do that. But what's funny to me 
is that you take those same individuals that may get weird sitting in a living room sharing their feelings, you get them on a work project, and all of a sudden they're just like, you know, talking through their issues, and pretty soon the guys are praying for each other because one of the guys decided that he was going to let the other guys know that last night him and his wife had a beef, and they got mad at each other, and they started fighting, and and then they're like, dude, we need to pray for your marriage right now. Bro, come over here. Like, that's, that's where you become family. And you have other brothers and sisters in your life that are going to have relational equity to speak into your life and, and, and have access to your life. And that's so important for us to experience. And um, number three, write this down. Serving is how you help the church go and grow. It's how the kingdom of God expands. Now, I'm one person, and I can only do so much as one person. But when we all collectively come together and we serve, we're able to do a lot more, and we're able to expand God's kingdom a lot more effectively when we do it together. That's why I like to say we're better together because, you know, think about the analogy of like a runner running a race. Now, I can run and pretty soon I'm going to get tired, right? And if I'm running by myself, it's going to be a lot easier to stop. It's going to be a lot easier just to give up. It's going to be a lot easier to not run as fast. But if I have a running buddy with me and they're like running and they're going fast and they're like not giving up going, come on, let's go. Eventually, we're going to help one another. And so we're going to push each other to go further faster than we would if we were by ourselves. So what's going to happen with serving is that you are allowing the the kingdom of God to expand but at the same time you're actually allowing your own faith to grow and so they work together that the church grows and your faith grows and everybody wins because think about how much God wants to do in this world and he has one body to do it in and we're his body and I think how sad it is sometimes that there's so much work to be done and God's like, if I, if I just had a body to do that and, and a, a body that was willing to do it. And, and I know when we planted this church, my prayer was, God, here we are, send us. And we are here to not just get a little social club on Sundays. Like we are here to roll up our sleeves and like we're here to make a difference. And I want to apply everything that we're doing. I, I want to create ministry from the things that we're, we're talking about. I want to be a church on the move because a church that is not going is a church that's not growing. So if a church isn't on the go, it will be a dying church. If a church isn't pressing and, and, and looking at culture and saying, how might we minister to the needs right now? And the only way we're gonna be able to effectively minister to needs is if we step up together and serve and be able to accomplish that. Like I started thinking about the Afghanistan crisis. Like there are hundreds of thousands of Afghanistan citizens that are trapped right now in Afghanistan and that are under the Taliban regime and that we're trying to, you know, even Glenn Beck and some other celebrities are going in there, putting private planes at risk and pulling people out. But, you know, if they ended up here in LA, which some of them will, I want to be a church that, hey, we have a whole new life ready to go for you. We've had people chip in money. We've had people chip in their, uh, their ability to, to go get all the furniture. We have people that chip in are going to mentor you and teach you English. And, and we're going to just love you and, and, and be there for you as a refugee. Now, I would love to do that. But if, if I did every ministry that came into my mind by myself, like my wife and I would have a terrible marriage. I would have no relationship with my kids because I'd be doing all this stuff. It, it, to, to have an expanded view of ministry is going to require all of us pitching in a little bit. And if we all pitch in, all we will need to give is a little bit. But it's the 80-20 rule. There's 20% of the people doing 100% of the work, while 80% of the people aren't doing any of the work. But if, a, if, if we served, if everybody that considers themselves a follower of Jesus looked at serving as not an option, but as a mandate from our Lord and Savior, think of how much more we would be able to do in this world for God's kingdom. We would all be more generous with our finances. We'd be more generous with our time. There'd be ministries 
that aren't even created yet created and thriving and changing lives and seeing people healed and restoring families and making a difference in this world. So I want to be that church. And you can see how that the serving is going to create the unity. Serving is going to create family. Serving is going to create ministry. And, and when you step into this place of not just acknowledging the fact that you're the body and that you've been created by God to, to be this connection point that you're, you're supposed to be connected with other people, that you're not meant to do this alone. It's going to change everything. I, I think about this new season, and I, and I know some of you are watching online, are not like local people. How can, how can we be a body? Because we're virtual. How can we come together? How can we serve? And even Victoria, when she was here with us from the state of Washington, she's like, I want to do more. What can we do with Atmosphere Life? How can we reach more people? How, how can we make a bigger difference for God's kingdom online? Some of you have some great ideas. Maybe we need to talk. Dada is our online host, and maybe some of you, you need to have some time with him offline and say, Dada, I've got some great ideas. I feel like God's put the, these things in my heart so we can start really maybe taking these ideas that are God-given and actually start walking them out, and so they come into fruition. They, we start living them out. I believe that. I, I believe that some of you have been inspired by God. I, I see Zoom groups forming in this new season where we can connect virtually at a Bible study and, and talk sermon questions online together. We would need Zoom hosts. Say, I would, I would host a Zoom group. I have a Zoom account. I can do that once a, a week or once every other week. I can host one. Some of you, maybe that's what God is calling you to do, to serve, to bring people more together, is host a Zoom group. Others, maybe it's like we're going to come together and we're going to maybe reach our, our Afghanistan refugees through social media. I don't know. Some of you have way better ideas than I do. But the idea is, let's do something. Let's make a difference. And when we are all activated and we're all participating, we are going to go and grow and God's kingdom is going to expand and your faith is also going to go to a new level. So where are you at with building this house? With the heart for the house. Are you in the bleachers? cheering as a fan or are you on the field playing the game as fam that's what God's called us to that he's called us all to be a part of that and when we do man you know what I'm telling you Mr. Potato Head you know he he looks a lot better when he has all the parts in place and he's able to be the guy that God has called us to be right he's I got to take a moment and build him right this is like pastor Jim play day right here right so we got his ears on got your ears on right here's here's the idea as you watch pastor Jim play with mr. potato head then he looks so much better and the church my friends is gonna look so much better because you are a body part of the body of Christ and we look so much better when we're functioning in our role and doing what God has called us to do. I want to pray with you and we're going to worship together. But Father, I, I pray everybody right now that is tuned in, God, that you would let this message resonate with them. That too many of us, God, have been sitting in the bleachers and just observing all that's happening, God, when you've called us into the game to be a participator, not just a spectator. So God, show us our role and help us with the capacity to serve. God, give us that ability to see that because your spirit lives in us, it's not our abilities, but it's, it's your spirit through me that is gonna equip me to be able to serve. God, I pray a new unity. God, I, I pray a, a new sense of community. I, I pray a, a new role of uh, growth and expansion as we step into these places and parts that you've called us to God and I want to pray for 
somebody that is watching that's that's tuned in and your life is a mess and things are are kind of coming undone everywhere you look and i do not believe that it is an accident that you tuned in today and i don't believe it's a coincidence i believe it's the providence of god and he has you and he's called you and he wants you to follow him and that following jesus is going to make you better at life and he's going to make your life better bottom line following jesus is going to make your life better make you better at life and i want to give you an invitation to follow jesus right now and let his spirit come and dwell in you because that my friends is where everything changes so just pray this prayer with me say jesus today i give you my life thank you for dying for my sin on the cross and resurrecting from the grave to give me your spirit i receive your holy spirit today come and fill my life and change me from the inside out for today i follow you jesus thank you for leading my life in jesus name amen and amen hey if you pray that prayer i want you to text the word follow to 805-334-8700 and we will follow up with you and make sure that you get some resources that are going to help you grow in your faith in following jesus And so we're going to worship with one more song, and let's worship hearty, and we'll see you next week. We're out for now. Let's worship. Thank you for tuning in today to another great message from Atmosphere Church. If this message is spoken to your heart, would you take a moment and share it with your friends? You can connect with us on Spotify, iTunes, Podcast, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Simply do a search for Atmosphere Church through these various platforms and then click the follow or subscribe button. If you're watching this video on YouTube, you should see it right below this video. It's another great way for us to be able to stay connected with you. If you live in the Southern California area, we would love to invite you to be part of our family. For more information about our church, go to our official webpage at atmosphere.church. Finally, if this service and our other resources bless you, would you consider giving back to Atmosphere Church to support not only these things, but also support the creation of even more resources for you? To make a donation, simply go to our website and click on the tab that says Give. Your gift of any amount is greatly appreciated. Until next time, we pray that you will keep the faith, spread the hope, and live the love.